We're continuing our series on mentoring in the prophetic by laying some very helpful foundations. And this week, I want to share with you how trying to hear God's voice can actually work to limit you in growing in the prophetic. I'm Robert Hodgkin. Welcome to the Supernatural Mentoring Series, where we make the supernatural simple so that you can grow in the things of the Spirit and become even more fulfilled and effective in your faith. Hey, I know you're hungry to grow in the supernatural, so be sure to listen and watch the rest of the videos in this series. I've got a link to the Supernatural Mentoring Series playlist in the description below. And of course, subscribe to my channel so you're notified every time we upload more content. Okay, so in these installments on the prophetic, we're building up to sharing all the different ways we can hear from God. But what I want to talk with you about before we go there is how trying to hear God's voice can sometimes work to limit you in growing in the prophetic. Let me tell you a story from my own experience to really help illustrate this. When I got saved late in life, God called me to full-time ministry almost immediately and connected me with a frontline pioneering prophetic ministry. So almost from the moment of my salvation, I was surrounded with people who hear from God. It seemed like everybody I talked to was telling me about how they were hearing God's voice, hearing God's voice, hearing God's voice. And one of the guys I worked with talked about how God would shout names of people until he called them out. Another guy that I was around, a wonderful minister I was around, often told me he was actually having Holy Spirit come up to him and whisper audibly in his ear, and it actually left a dew from the breath of the Holy Spirit. It seemed like everybody was hearing God's voice. And here I am in in prophetic ministry as a brand new Christian, and I'm thinking, I'm not hearing the audible voice of God. And I got frustrated. I started to doubt, do I even hear from God? I knew that uh, in John, when it says, John 10, where Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, I knew that had to be true because it is the word of God, but I wasn't literally hearing the voice of God. And so that frustration, that attempt, pressing in, striving, I'm going to hear your voice, I'm going to hear your voice, thinking that had to mean the audible voice of God actually was getting me so frustrated and so kind of bunged up and striving and pressing in in a works kind of way of thinking, oh, how do I hear God's voice? I want to hear God's voice. I need to hear God's voice. If I'm not actually hearing the audible voice of God, I'm not prophetic. So I'm going through all of this frustration, all this challenge, all this just uh, striving. And I'm in my prayer chair one morning, and all of a sudden, the Lord in his mercy and grace takes me into this vision. And it wasn't even like some 3D technicolor vision. It was a series of impressions, but it was clear to me. And what he was showing me was I grew up in the 1970s. So any of you who are younger than that, you may not remember clock radios, but I had a clock radio by my bed as a kid and it had a dial on the side and it had a little orange, like, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a little orange nub, basically, that physically scrolled across the, uh, uh, all the, the, the receiver, basically, the front of the receiver, all the different frequencies or, uh, of the, the radio. And I dial in, physically dial into my favorite stations. And so God takes me into a vision from a clock radio like that I grew up with when I was a kid. And I see the little orange thing going across the dial and it's going... And all of a sudden it gets to the middle of the dial and there's a clear signal. And I see on the radio that it lights up and it says WGOD. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up um, uh, east of the Mississippi. So all the radio stations were W this, W that. Like I would listen to, remember every night I would dial into 3WE to listen to the Radio Mystery Theater. I love the old time radio shows that played, they replayed them in the 70s when I was a kid. Or I'd listen to WMMS for music or 3WE for music, but they were all W's. And this dial goes over. When it hits WGOD, it lights up and there's a really clear signal. And as I said, it was a clock radio, but technically that clock radio or the stereos we had back then that you dialed into the stations as well, those were called receivers. And the Lord starts to speak to me about how I was getting in my own way, being so literal about hearing 
God's voice, only listening for an audible voice. And the Lord said, I'm going to teach you how to receive from me. And I'm going to teach you how you're naturally wired to receive from me. And when he helped me switch from only listening for an audible voice of God to learning how to receive from him, everything shifted and everything changed. All of a sudden, I realized when I was in the word and and the logos went into the rhema and he quickened a word, something out of the Bible became active, real and alive. Like when he highlighted in John, what was it, 10 2, where he said I, uh, he calls his disciples unto them, unto him and gives them power and authority over sickness and disease. And I read that and was like, oh, my gosh, this is my first week of being a Christian up in my cabin in the woods of Montana. And I remember jumping out of my chair and saying, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. That means he's given me authority over sickness and disease. He helped me see and understand that's receiving from God. That's hearing his voice, even when it's not an audible voice. That's allowing him to highlight scripture to me that is true, that becomes the voice of the Lord to me, that becomes a word of God to me. And he showed me some other ways that I was naturally wired to receive from him. And that's really what it's about, whether it's an audible voice or all the other ways we're going to talk about that we're naturally wired to receive. What I discovered is when I stopped only trying to hear his audible voice and started embracing and celebrating and giving thanks for the ways I received from him, everything changed. First of all, all the, the striving fell away, the frustration fell away, the sort of religious push and performance of, uh, you know, fear fell away of, I'm not hearing God's voice. Everybody else is hearing God's voice. Why aren't I hearing God's voice? Is there something wrong with me? Am I even saved? All those types of lies and voices fell away. And this ease and this grace and this peace came upon me when I realized, oh my gosh, I'm receiving from God all the time. So the striving fell away, the frustration fell away. But then this great gratitude of, of, of for the intimacy that we shared and the ways that he personally spoke to me and graced me to receive from him that was just as real if it was an audible voice. As I embraced that intimacy and gave thanks for the way he made me receive, he created me to receive from him in our very special relationship of father and son, bride and bridegroom. They increased. The more I celebrated and, and, and gave thanks for how I was receiving, the more I received. And then so here's what's really cool is I also started to receive in other ways because I was relaxing. I started hearing more. I started seeing more. And this was really, really important because one of the principles, as we know, is Thanksgiving brings increase. And as opposed to getting all frustrated and irritated and challenged and afraid that oh, I'm not hearing, why aren't I hearing? And I started with, oh, God, thank you for how you've made me to receive. Thank you for the ways you speak to me. Thank you for the words you make real to me. Thank you for this gift of communication in relationship. Like we talked about last week, why God speaks is because it's all about relationship. As I embrace that, it all began to become simpler and easier. So me trying so hard to hear God's voice audibly actually got in the way of me growing in the prophetic. When I moved past that, and celebrated and rejoiced in and rested in the ways he naturally created me to receive, it increased, it multiplied, it became simple, it became relationship. I became confident in hearing from him and in learning how to hear what was from him in these ways I was naturally wired to receive. So we're gonna circle back to this after we talk about all the different ways to receive from God in the next several weeks because I've got an activation for you that's going to help you discover, just like he helped me discover, the ways you created by God to receive. And as you rest in those and celebrate those and give thanks for those, they will not only increase, you'll not only increase in that prophetic gifting, but I believe like me, as you rest in those things, the other ways of receiving will also begin to open up to you. 
Before we go there, next week, I have one more foundational truth for you that's really, really important. That's going to help us really have this firm foundation to launch out into all the different ways we can hear and receive from God. And then I'll also share that activation with you because we're going to continue this series on the prophetic for several more weeks because I know you guys are hungry for it. That's the thing you've most requested. But this week, I wanted to talk about something that we don't talk about very often how that striving that effort that if like me you can be so you so believe the word of god my sheep hear my voice i got so literal about that i was trying so hard to hear god's audible voice like others around me were that i was missing all the ways god was already speaking to me that i was receiving from him. So next week, one more foundational truth. Then we'll go into all the different ways we hear and receive. I'll share this activation with you because you are going to grow in the prophetic. All right. So one last thing, be sure to share these videos and the Supernatural Mentoring Series playlist with anyone you know who also wants to grow in the supernatural aspects of their Christian faith. And as I said, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel or this Rumble channel, whichever one you're watching on, so you get notified of whenever we upload more content. So thanks so much for being with me this week when we talked about how trying to hear God's voice literally can actually get in the way of you growing in the prophetic. But now that you know it's about receiving from God, you're going to be opened up to hearing from him in all the different ways we're getting ready to talk about. You're going to rest in that. You're going to give thanks to that and you are going to grow in the prophetic. If you're hungry for more of the supernatural, you don't have to wait for the next Supernatural Mentoring Series video. I recommend you go and get a copy of my new book, Realms of Power, Operating in Untapped Dimensions of Holy Spirit Power Today. You can get it through roberthotchkin.com, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. You can go to your local bookstore, and if they don't have it on the shelf, they'll order it in for you. And if you happen to like ebooks, well, you can get a Kindle edition from Amazon, or you can get an iBook edition from Apple Books. But anywhere in the world, you can get a copy, either a hard copy or a, a, a digital copy, an, an ebook copy of Realms of Power. And it'll open up 12 different supernatural realms of power in the Holy Spirit to you. Every single chapter is another, it's about another realm, shows you scripturally what you have and gives you keys on how to begin to move in it. So you can start establishing these realms in your life and in the earth through your life. There are things like the power of faith, the power to work miracles, um, the power to shift atmosphere, the power of tongues, the power of decree, the power to create wealth, and so much more. Get your copy of Realms of Power and start moving in the supernatural aspects of your Christian faith today.